In this video lesson, we'll investigate the bloodshed at Lexington and Concord and evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of each side at the onset of the American Revolution. In September, the First Continental Congress is going to meet, and they are going to express a consensus on the liberties that they claimed as English subjects. They're also going to agree on what they think Parliament's legitimate powers are over them, and they're going to devise a unified response to the coercive or the intolerable acts. Delegates to the Congress included Virginia's Patrick Henry, George Washington, Sam Adams, and John Adams, and they and others were all leaders of the anti-British cause in their home colonies. Meeting over seven weeks, Congress produced a Declaration of Rights stating that they only ask for peace, liberty, and security. We wish no diminution of royal prerogatives. We demand no new rights. The Congress also called for a staggered and limited boycott of trade to be enforced and monitored by a continental association consisting of committees of public safety or of inspection with powers to punish violators. In October 1774, the Congress adjourns, agreeing to reconvene, if necessary, in May 1775. Afterwards, towns throughout the colonies established the aforementioned committees, adding to the breakdown of British authorities in the colonies. England's harsh reaction to the Boston Tea Party made colonials from New Hampshire to Georgia fully realize the problems of British rule far exceeded questions of taxation. England rejected the Congress's petition of claims to rights Americans had long assumed to be there, specifically that Americans were not represented in Parliament and that each colonial government had the sole right to legislate for and tax its own people. Over the winter of 1774 to 1775, Americans continued to enforce the boycotts. Some were secretly stockpiling arms, ammunition, and organizing militia units. General Thomas Gage, a military commander, who a new royal governor of Massachusetts, realized that the British Army had a very precarious position in Boston and request 20,000 reinforcements from Lord North. Gage advised both North and Parliament to repeal the coercive acts, although his advice went unheeded, and in April 1775, he was ordered to arrest troublemakers and seize the weapons and ammunitions that were currently being stockpiled. So on the evening of April 18, 1775, Gage organized a surprise raid on a suspected weapons storage site at Concord. Late that night, British regulars crossed Boston Harbor, the Charles River, and marched towards Concord. Paul Revere, who was a Boston silversmith, silversmith and William Dawes, who was a tanner, observed the British movements and rode ahead, alerting the Minutemen and militia that the British were coming and to calling the units to arms. At Lexington, Massachusetts, which was a town five miles east of Concord, British troops encountered approximately 70 armed men. British officers or ordered the Americans at Lexington to disarm and disperse, at which time someone fired, no one really knows from which side, and within two minutes, eight Americans were killed and ten were wounded. Upon entering the town of Concord, British troops encountered more Minutemen, who offered no initial resistance as the British searched the town um, in vain for their weapon stores. The fighting of April 19, 1775 marked the beginning of the American Revolutionary War. Finally, at Concord's Old North Bridge, Minutemen and British regulars skirmished, killing three British soldiers and two Americans. The British withdrew to Boston along a narrow road surrounded by trees and brush, which was cover from which American militiamen were hiding and firing at the retreating soldiers, killing or wounding 273 men. The odds of American revolutionaries prevailing against England were overwhelmingly favored England. Uh, this is a kind of a, a David and Goliath situation. Uh, England was more, uh, had more strengths when it came to population because their population um, was three to one. It enjoyed a rich treasury capable of mounting a war and hiring foreign mercenaries, so they had a lot more money. 
It possessed a professional army of nearly 50,000 men, so they were professionally trained. It enjoyed naval supremacy on the high seas with the British fleet and had numerous Indian allies um, that were anxious to prevent Americans from expanding west and winning the war. However, England also had some disadvantages. British forces had to operate 3,000 miles from home, which created delays as well as communication issues and supply problems. Britain's army had to overcome the vast geographical expanse of the colonies. American revolutionary forces had no center of political power or capital, British generals were often second-rate, since more capable officers were closer to home in England. Parliament's political leadership was divided between Tories and anti-war pro-American Whigs. And problems in Ireland had required large numbers of British troops um, were still continuing. American revolutionaries had some advantages. Um, they had outstanding political leadership and military leaders, especially George Washington. Um, these leaders had gained valuable experience fighting alongside English soldiers in the French and Indian War. They had covert military aid from France and other nations that were opposed to England's dominant position. With the help of European military officers, including the Marquis de Lafayette and the Baron von Steuben, uh, they were able to train their officers. The, uh, they had the advantage of fighting a defensive war on familiar ground and the moral advantage of fighting for a cause they strongly believed in because they were fighting, fighting for their homes. Americans also suffered a number of disadvantages, including a Continental Congress that was racked by internal divisions and didn't agree, jealousies between individual colonies and the efforts of Congress to direct the war, Jealousies among officers in the Continental Army and over between the Army and the militia over rank and promotions. Financial difficulties raising funds and supplying an army due to lack of hard currency. Printing of large amounts of Continental paper money, which depreciated very quickly in value. They had a very high desertion rate among soldiers that were concerned over the welfare of their families and shortages of manufactured goods, weapons, gunpowder, uniforms, and ammunition. based on the information about strengths and weaknesses that we have just reviewed here, which side do you believe should have, been, uh, should have won the war and explain why?